When you launch Painter X3, you'll see the logo and you will be greeted with a welcome screen that has a random slideshow of work that's been created in Painter X3 by a number of Painter Masters. You can always scroll through there to get a hint of what can be accomplished or get inspiration for your own work. On the left, you can choose to create a new image, open an existing image, choose a recent image that you've been working on, or open a template that has the dimensions and resolution that you have already saved. As far as setup, your workspace or desktop can be either the default that came straight from the factory, or it can be an arrangement that has been organized beforehand or borrowed from another artist. Brush tracking is quite important, and I'll show you that. It's a scratch pad where you take your stylus and make a stroke that is typical of your pressure and speed. I'll do another one and just keep your eye on the sliders down there. You're not going to directly move the sliders around, but you're going to simply make that stroke and then trust that Painter will now be able to adjust to your unique touch. I'll create a new image. I will accept my 18 by 12 inches because I'm an American, but if I want to be a little more worldly, I'll choose pixels. That should work nicely, and I'll accept the white color by default, although I know that if I click on that swatch, I can get a variety of colors available. Let me just say OK for that. Likewise, if I want to, I can choose a different paper texture, but this one is OK for now, so I will click OK. And now I have my blank canvas. It's showing at 66.7%. I like looking at my work at 100% as much as possible, so I will double click the magnifier tool in the toolbox, and then I'll switch to the brush tool. This is going to be the tool that you use for all of your mark making, drawing, and painting on the canvas. The core of Painter is the brushes. Painter uses the term brush to refer to any kind of mark making tool or preset. They are listed in categories here on the left in your brush selector. Notice the large number of categories. Some of them may sound very familiar, some not. Airbrushes, chalk and crayons, erasers, markers, pencils, pens, sponges, watercolor. Each time you choose a category, you'll be shown a list of several, sometimes many, specific variants that is how big and how soft and how grainy and in what shape is this particular example of a pastel in this case. As you simply hover your stylus or mouse over the name of a variant, if you look at the bottom of the panel, you'll see a stroke preview indicating in gray what the stroke will look like when you apply it to the canvas. And to the left of that, a round or elliptical or sometimes uh, oddly shaped footprint or dab of this particular brush. So let's choose one of these. Let's choose square hard pastel. And we are seeing the footprint or dab of this particular brush. Square Hard Pastel makes a stroke that is very much responsive to the paper grain, and we refer to this kind of a brush as grainy. And it looks just like we expect a pastel to look in real life. That is, it will be showing paper texture. Let's go back to our brush selector and choose another category that is familiar to us. Pencils. I can use the real 2B pencil, and when I go over to my color panel, I'll just make a different color happen, and I'll scribble with this pencil. And if I should zoom in, and I'm going to zoom in with a keyboard command, which is Command or Control key and the plus sign, as I zoom in, I can see that this pencil is also showing me some grainy quality that is responsive to the paper texture that I have selected. Back to 100%, which I'm achieving by using Command or Control and the minus key. 
Let's try a variant in the pens category. Once again, looking at the bottom of the panel, we see the stroke preview and the dab. I'm going to use dry ink, which has a very bristly footprint. If I simply tap on my canvas, I can show those bristles. When I make a stroke, those bristles are going to create a rather interesting juicy edge, if you will. And I'll change color once again, maybe to black this time. And I want you to see that this particular brush has a very wide range of width from very thin to very thick based entirely on the pressure that you apply with your stylus. And I'll clear the canvas because it's getting kind of crowded by using the select all command, which also has a keyboard shortcut, command or control A, and then I will hit the delete or backspace key. So I invite you to practice using some or all of these categories and at least a few of the variants. It will take you a very long time to practice using all of them. There are some 900 specific variants, all told, and we have just begun to scratch the surface. I'll introduce you to more brushes, and as we proceed through these movies, I will show you how you can organize and control your brushes.